Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Monday Markets. First things first, we will continue technical roundup as it is. Don's current internet situation isn't great. He's moving house, so it's a bit wonky and all over the place. But bigger picture, we've been making content since 2017. We will continue making content. That's not going anywhere. So we hope you stick with us and thank you for your support. Second of all, as we've tweeted and shared publicly, we regret what happened to FTX and feel terrible having lent our credibility to them via our association and partnership with this channel over the last year or so. I mean, it, it just sucks, frankly. Uh, we saw it just like most of the industry did as a relatively safe place. We turned away much more lucrative offers, thinking that this were more credible and lower risk for our audience. We hold ourselves to very high standards when it comes to any kind of partnership, endorsement type of stuff, which is why you never see tokens or any dodgy stuff on our channel. So this sucks, it hurts, and we're sorry. Hopefully you stick by us. Uh, needless to say, we didn't know anything, didn't see it coming, and just as shocked as most of the industry. Um, so let's get to why you watch Technical Roundup, which is hopefully our analysis and our market views. First things first, when it comes to Bitcoin higher time frame stuff, the levels that are below us remain largely the same from our monthly, quarterly, weekly type of structures. So if we go to the monthly, you'll recall that having failed the 20k level, Given this breakdown, the next monthly level is closer to 14k, which is this highest monthly close here. If we kind of zoom in a little bit or go on lower time frames, if we look at where that 14k level falls, it's more towards the extremes of this shelf. And when I say this shelf, I'm specifically referring to this sort of 12k pre breakout type of structure. Now, this one is very important because for several, so this was the kind of lower high in 2018. Then the rally in 2019 capped out there as well, and you had a small attempt at a deviation in 2020, and it's really the break of this 12k handle that just accelerated price to the prior all-time high and beyond. So the big kind of level and inflection point, if you're looking at candle structure specifically, is closer to about 12k in that uh, triple top, formal range high, whatever you want to call it. So while it's true that 14k is an area of monthly support, if we're looking at the candle structure and the context with, with, within which it took place, it was a very kind of one-sided inefficient move here and those types of moves tend to be filled quite quickly especially when the market is trending so it's completely possible for example that even if this area and ends up acting as some sort of support reaccumulation whatever you want to call it that you get the wick portion of the monthly candle closer to 12k and then maybe the body or candle close closer to 14k that's completely plausible but Regardless of how you want to view it, the high time frame support shelf, high time frame close, closing basis is the 14k. In terms of where the actual meaningful candle structure is, it's closer to 12k. So those are the level below us, or the levels below us. Now the market doesn't have to go there or respect those views. It's completely plausible, for example, that it simply consolidates before those levels, and then you get some sort of failed breakdown and development from that point. But if, you know, if we're going to trade the levels that are on the chart, those are the two areas uh, that really make a difference in our view. Now, in terms of the structure that we're coming from, uh, we broke down from 20k. Uh, that in itself, in sort of rather straightforward TA terms, is bearish, because what we essentially had was a multi-month consolidation in the context of a downtrend that, that, that then broke down. So you have high time frame trend continuation after a long consolidation within the context of a downtrend. So that's just bearish on its face. The only way that that will be invalidated would be a clear higher high and or close above 20k, then you can make the argument that this is the deviation or the overthrow or the excess, and then it's a move back within the range. So you'd have to sh see evidence from the market that the breakdown isn't being accepted, and that evidence becomes apparent if the point of breakdown gets reclaimed, and you see some constructive sort of higher high market structure above the point of breakdown, uh, but we're quite far from that. I think, again, at face value, we went sideways, we're in a downtrend, we went sideways for a month, and we just broke down from that point. So the Unfortunately, the sort of 6K type of analogs, which we talked about extensively uh, on this stream, that definitely um, seems appropriate as far as comparisons go for the time being. So the two ideas are rather self-evident at this point. You know, if the market pukes, those are your levels to do business. If the market is strong, it needs to at least get above 20K for that strength to mean anything. If it rallies in the interim, then I think this sort of underside 19k area is resistance until proven otherwise. And there's really not much to do uh, at this exact juncture, even basic eye test. You've got, you know, support is below 
resistance is above and it's right in the middle between those two levels and the market just recently broke down so not chasing into any positioning there and i think that's uh, all the importance and the salient points when it comes to bitcoin dollar and we'll have to deal with it one level at a time and see what the market brings us uh, as far as ETH goes, uh, rather similar arguments to be made. Unlike Bitcoin, the breakdown isn't as obvious because its performance was better and hasn't had time to sort of catch up. So Bitcoin broke down through its range low, whereas ETH hasn't. And the level that's holding ETH up at the moment is this monthly highest close at 1.1, 1.2k or thereabouts. I think if you get a breakdown there, that would be a sign of ETH catching up to the downside. And at that point, I would expect much of this pre-breakout price action to get filled. Uh, in terms of where the higher time frame targets for that would be, it's a bit less clear. I think the earliest... I think it's important to kind of look at this pre-bear market consolidation as a useful level. So the earliest area where I think you have some sort of candle structure where you might get a bounce is the range high of this pre-bear market cluster, which is around the 600-700 level. Uh, if we get much deeper discounts and sort of a, a much more meaningful fill of this leg, then we're looking at sort of 400 to 500. And at that point, we have much more candle structure to deal with as well. And that sort of becomes evident if you look on the weekly time frame. You know, this this area is a bit thin and inefficient in terms of price action. And then it gets, it gets a bit more blocky and you have more horizontal structure when it comes to the three to four hundred, you know, three to five hundred or four hundred to five hundred to be more specific handle. Um, obviously, same framework approach makes sense here of one level at a time and kind of see what the market offers. Uh, but, you know, if we really start to puke, that's, I think, a decent area to pay attention to. But for the time being, the market is holding its respective range low at 1.1k or thereabouts, which makes the market quite tricky because ETH hasn't broken down structure yet, whereas Bitcoin is in free fall. I think this gives you a couple of options. One is just to trade a short term trade ETH with the structure that's available because Bitcoin isn't at a level whereas ETH is. So that's completely reasonable. Or what you could do is wait for Bitcoin to form something bullish or right, arrive at a level or form some sort of higher time frame structure that's worth trading and then express that view via ETH in in sort of because it's been relatively stronger if you know if you're going to long Bitcoin you might as well long ETH and get better returns so I think those two things make sense uh, I'm in general not too interested in engaging in the market uh, while Bitcoin is sort of in the middle of nowhere free fully but if that changes uh, depending on what the ETH chart looks like I think that's a decent way to express your bets but yes uh, given ETH hasn't broken through its June lows or even sort of broken this weekly cluster yet the first evidence of that catch up coming into play would be any sort of acceptance below 1.1k and I think we uh, have a decent chance of trading back towards this pre-bear market range and then we sort of deal with it one level at a time at that point so i think those are some reasonable options there uh, i've obviously redone my watch list in terms of altcoins in which i have an interest in general uh bnb is one of them biggest exchange now and you know the the sort of monopoly there is uh, pretty meaningful the range low level that i have for bnb is unchanged at around 210 uh, you could also use the wick if we're going to get some sort of price action at the extremes uh, in the sort of 190 handle. But in any case, if there's any sort of uh, range low business to be done, uh, it'll be in that area. Um, the scary part is this thing did so well early in the bull market. If I'm going to be consistent in my whole inefficient price action thing, uh, it, you get to kind of really scary points because all of this, um, this entire leg from, you know, <laughs> sort of the 50s onwards is inefficient. So taken to an extreme, that that would be a that would be a calamitous decline. So I, I think realistically, and especially with as much market share as um, BNB has, absent a complete catastrophe, if the market is going to bottom at reasonable levels, uh, I think sort of some iteration of bullish price action in this range low would make sense, even if it means like an overextension initially that eventually ends up in some sort of reclaim with this being the excess of the deviation. That to me seems much more likely and much more attractive as a trade than targeting some sort of mega gap fill the entire way down to about $50. I mean, that that is truly uh, the end of times type of price action and would take some uh, unreal catalyst to get there. So realistically, if I'm looking to time uh, some sort of BNB bottom, I think the idea has to be premised on this range low, either outrightly or ideally with some sort of failed break. So I've got something clearer to define my risk, but that's really the level for BNB that matters. Um, and it's just coming off the range high that we talked about uh, in the last technical roundup closer to the 
sort of 300 handle. So that's sort of where the market is for the time being. Um, you know, it's reached the local area of support, just the, you know, the range high to range low structure in the 250s, 260s. So maybe in the short term, uh, we get a bit of a range here between 260 and 300. That would be reasonable for like a day trading type of idea. Um, but again, the market's quite shaky at the moment. Uh, but if you're comfortable buying sort of one, two, three, four, the fifth or sixth test of that structure, that's fine uh, on a scalping basis. But bigger picture, I'm not really interested in short-term trading for, for the time being uh, as far as matic goes similar thing you know that they've they've sort of done quite well in this market uh, the level that uh, my eye is drawn to remains this cluster in the sort of 40 cent or around the 40 cents handle you can see that that was the sort of mini consolidation before the final leg up and also where the last bottom formed so similar ish to bnb it's one of those do or die range low types of structures maybe it gets front run around 50 55 cents in this uh, higher low cluster here but in any case you know if the market's going to continue to show weakness and trade lower uh, any type of bullish price action would have to similar to BNB, either bounce from the range low or some iteration of that trade, even if it initially means an overextension that isn't accepted before moving higher. And again, all of these ideas would just be short-term trades, you know, buy support, sell resistance. Uh, my expectation for any type of uh, trending environment is rather low given um, the state of the market at the moment. Obviously, the apocalypse scenario, again, is like a gap fill of this entire move. That would be pretty catastrophic. So um, would rather not see that. And I think still taking it one level at a time makes the most sense. Uh, Solana is still technically interesting. It's it's going to suffer in the short term because it's part of that whole SBF empire, the VC coin, and it has all those negative associations and the amount Alameda was holding and the supply and just being entangled in that web isn't good. Uh, but, you know, uh, as a layer one, the, the, the hackathons are relatively popular. Um, Raj and Anatoly started building this thing in the bear market, so it's not their first bear market. Um, you know, the NFTs on there have some sort of traction that kind of did better than the other L1. So maybe there's something worth salvaging there. Uh, in terms of levels, again, given how unclear the supply overhang is, I'd certainly be careful and patient when it comes to this thing. And it did on this most recent breakdown, just wipe out everything, right? It broke down from its most recent range. It broke down from the larger range as well. And this is just like a really bearish move. Uh, at the moment, it's at a level, you know, we, we discussed this $15 mini cluster, but even there, there isn't a ton of relief on the weekly time frame because it closed below and that's currently acting as resistance. So, you know, if Solana gets really, really pukey and fills in this leg and trades back towards its kind of listing structure at four to five dollars, uh, I'd definitely nibble on it there. Or if it chooses to show some sort of strength, maybe above 15, but it's probably a bit too soon for that. Um, I, I think TA on this is fine. But a larger context is also applicable. I think if enough time passes and uh, the entire supply churn is over, this may be, it might be an interesting pickup depending on uh, where it is price-wise. So I think this one might need a bit more time, space, and monitoring given the uh, supply dyna dynamics at play. There are a few others here that are on my watch list, Uni, Atom, Link, but none of them are terribly compelling at the moment. Link is sort of dead to rights at the range low, arguably broke below it. Um, the level there, you know, if it, if it accelerates, we have to look at this those pre-breakout highs closer to about $4.00 or thereabouts. So that's one level to keep an eye on if this consolidation rolls over. And in general, it would mean price trading back within this range as a whole. We could probably even map that out to, to give you an understanding of where that might be. You know, more or less three and a half dollar range high, two and a half dollar range midpoint, a buck 60 um, range low. So, you know, this would be the next tradable area if this consolidation breaks down and picks up. Uh, again, that would be a video to make at the time as it's trading towards those levels, given you know I'm not too interested in doing business here. Um, and that's kind of the crypto view. Again, the larger context is that given the magnitude of this blow up, um, just before I came on, I heard, you know, I read Travis Kling's uh, thread that Ikigai, his, his hedge fund, had all their money on FTX and uh, exchanges having withdrawal problems. And it's just it's just really sad, really unfortunate. But also given the opaqueness of the CFI crypto hedge fund ecosystem, we, we simply don't know the degree of the contagion and who had their treasury on there. Are they going to sell their other liquid names? What they managed to get out? What about projects and their financing and other exchanges lending? The, the whole thing is a um, complete quagmire. And we just sort of we just don't know. Uh, so I think giving it some time to churn, digest, and reprice is probably smart, uh, especially even just purely on TA terms. It's the first week after a 
breakdown from a multi-month range. And generally speaking, you don't rush in those circumstances. Uh, the bittersweet thing is that the S&P looks strong. Uh, CPI inflation came in lighter uh, than usual, came in a bit cool. And so the markets really enjoyed that and rallied and dollar got completely cratered. And it's all the usual stuff we'd want to see you know, absent the implosion in our industry, I think we'd be at the range high for Bitcoin at 25K, if not higher. We don't enjoy that luxury. One thing to bear in mind that if, you know, if whatever correlation bots are left trading this thing, if the S&P 500 starts to slow down and dollar kind of retraces its dump and we start seeing legacy weakness, uh, that'll probably affect us. You know, w when this stuff is up, we just about hold on. When this stuff is down, we get hammered even harder. So, no good news seemingly from legacy or not in a way that positively affects us anyway. Uh, but the TA on this has still been working well. Um, nice bounce. I mean, perfect bounce off of the reclaimed range low as we sort of discussed this monthly flip and do or die level. I think now it's reaching an area of resistance. The It's poked above the, sorry, that's completely wrong. The range midpoint is around 4K. You see it's 39.80 here. And in general, we have it delineated as this just up candle and this weekly cluster. That's sort of where the market is right now. Um, and, and so sort of that's the next pivot that we're into. Uh, maybe it pulls back to support or even if it pushes up and uses that as support. Whatever happens now, you know, this is like dead center at the range midpoint. This was very clear. If it gets the range high, uh, the price action there will be instructive. But this is a classic diddle, don't diddle in the middle type of scenario where we've got to let the market tell us whether the range midpoint is going to be a meaningful pivot or not. Just something, something to bear in mind more so from the crypto correlation side. Uh, that's really all from me. I hope this was helpful. Uh, please let me know in the comments what more you want to see. Uh, if you want more content on the Crypto Cred channel, I recently uploaded an updated horizontal support resistance video. Uh, it's about 40 minutes long and a, you know, an update after four years, so there's some good stuff there. And that channel in general will be a lot more active with educational stuff. But of course, if there's more technical roundup specific stuff you want to see, uh, let us know and we'll make it happen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. We hope you stick with us. Um, like, subscribe, do all the normal YouTube stuff. Let's keep it going and hope you have an excellent week. Take care and goodbye.